Hi there, namaste. This is Lindsay Porter of Yoga New You. And uh, I've invited my good friend and yogi, Donna Noble, who's a wonderful ambassador for body positivity. And um, the two of us thought it would be a really good idea to get together, do a live video recording, and just talk about uh, body shapes and sizes, yoga on the mat, tips and hints. Maybe if you have questions following this, you want to get in touch, and we can uh, maybe produce a few more and do some poses as well. Uh, but firstly, hi, Donna. Hi, Lindsay. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. So fun to be doing this with you, a first. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. And many firsts together, and another one. <laughs> this is true, great. So, uh, as, Don, as you know, Donna and I are really passionate about yoga for minds and bodies, and we both do a lot of work in different areas about um, supporting, uh, making it more accessible, um, improving our mental health and well-being, but also working with what we've got. Uh, and the important thing is to allow yourself to uh, be on the mat, do your breathing exercises, and work in what you, what you have. So today's really about um, perhaps breaking down some of the barriers and myths and giving you some tips and hints to um, support you in that. So we're going to do a bit of a and a session. So Donna, I've got a question for you to start us off with. Okay, fire away. Yes, Donna. Some people would uh, see you as this typical, beautiful yoga body, tall, slim, uh, very toned and fit. Uh, you're a bit cram trained. And um, I just wondered why body positivity for you in particular and why and why now? Okay. Um, the reason, Lindsay, for body positivity was um, first and foremost, I um, read an article um, by a curvy journalist. Deborah Cockling, um, about two years ago, and it was she's a curvy individual, and I just read about her experience in 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 a yoga class, and because she was curvy, she was invariably stared at by other yogis and ignored by the yoga teachers, and something kind of didn't feel right, and apparently I kept talking about this and saying it's not right and etc. And my friends were like, well, either shut up or do something about it. So something resonated with me there because yoga is about union, not just with your with yourself but with others as well so um so shortly after that I kind of came up with a name and I like the word wholesome and the word curvy but as you know because you've done the curvy yoga training all connotations or permutations of the word curvy had gone but I didn't want a name that would put people off so I like wholesome but I thought I couldn't put wholesome yoga because what would that mean so I put curve and then some and that's how curve some yoga came about and even in the beginning Lindsay, I didn't even know if it um something like that was required. So um, the way in which I got confirmation, excuse me, was when I went to the OM yoga show and I got it crowdfunded. So everything seemed to lead me towards that. And when I went, the reaction, Lindsay, was just amazing that I was the only one doing anything that catered for somebody over a size 12. And it didn't even, um, cons my size didn't even come in as a fact. I did get a little bit of pushback from friends initially, just exactly for that reason you're you're slim so how can you um teach someone that's curvy and then it was when somebody said to me okay so you don't have to um, be gay to advocate gay rights and I thought you know what you've got a valid point here and that's how I was able to um push back on that but I have to say Lindsay I'm glad to say that I don't get much um push back on that now because I think maybe cursing is more established everyone knows that's about me and when we get into the class Lindsay it doesn't matter about bodies. We we go beyond that, and so it, it doesn't. It's not an issue with my students. I love that. Thanks for sharing that. Thank you. So Lindsay, right back at you because you did the curvy yoga training and very body positive in what you do. Yeah, for me, it's been really about a journey of my body. So um, to sort of, um, I've had two children. I ended up having two cesarean sections. And with that comes lots of lumps and bumps and new things that have been a real journey for me to A, understand why are they suddenly with me and B, they're not necessarily going to perhaps ever disappear. So that has definitely impacted my own yoga practice and really changed my the way I see and how other people relate to their own bodies. And you know, it's still very much a journey I'm on, but uh, what I'm doing is always working towards acceptance. And I think part of that acceptance is working with what you've got and, um, and maybe it is using more props in whatever way. And I think that partly led me to the idea of going to do some additional training with Anna Guest Jelly that runs Curvy Yoga in America. And uh, it really just supported that practice. And it's definitely helped me be more confident as well, because as a teacher, you are very much on show, but I kind of come back to the notion of, do you know what? 
I'm doing the best I can working what I've got. So I like to make modifications. I like to maybe, you know, just make it a bit lighter in the room. You know, you can sort of, if you can grab some layers, grab, you know, great, like grab them, make yourself more comfortable. See if you can like move it out the way or tuck it somewhere just to help you really feel, you know, you're doing the best for your body. Um, so that's really been where I've come from with the yoga and bringing in this idea of more body positivity into the classes. Yeah, and that's lovely to, to, to see, Lindsay. So, and that's why I think we kind of came together, and that's how we we met as well in 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 that respect. So it's nice to see, and and very much as you said, Lindsay. You know, just come to the yoga with the body that you have. You know, and, and, you. and everybody's a yoga body. You know, I think we're born yogis. And I think it's a really powerful message that people are open to hearing these days about being real people on the mat and not necessarily needing to airbrush or whatever and you know just kind of kind of be where you're at and I know your own journey through having Bell's palsy and you've been talking a lot about that lately and that's such an empowering thing and that's a very visual thing too isn't it that people see so not that really dissimilar from having a curvy body or whatever it is. Exactly and that's why I've, I've think I've gone more down the body positive route and also the body image route because the bell's palsy because it came from nowhere a very visible illness and it just knocked me for six it's completely sort of changed me initially until the yoga helped me to heal and taking a more holistic route to my healing made me um come to terms with that and and live with that and, and recover for um from it somewhat and I still today um still on this healing journey with it but I feel more empowered to let everyone get out there and see that it's what's on the inside that's most important it's not what's on the outside and if there's anyone that um is is more sense about looks then maybe they're not right to be in your life because everything at the moment Lindsay is very from an external point of view and right now you know with social media this endemic of you know, having to alter the way you look, you know, and that's why I'm passionate about doing this. Just be the way you are and be real. Because when you try to achieve some of these unrealistic um, looks or or what the, the latest mm. thing is at the moment, like maybe it's getting a Kardashian butt, which, <laughs> you know, it doesn't make you happy. And then once you're happy with yourself, then you can move away from all these external factors and see that what we're being sold in the media isn't, real and is is not sustainable that you know a lot of these images are airbrushed i think you're right and it's really good to bring these messages out and i know uh, very soon you'll be uh, at the healthcare conference that heather mason's running and it's great to see that that you know there's this great collection of people that are all talking about really important subjects around yoga and our health yeah because you know you know in india you know yoga the reason why yoga is so popular now for various reasons but it's been around for thousands of years and it works that's why it's still around it's not going to be one of these things that's in fashion um it's always it, it always there and a lot of teachers that you find that are very passionate about yoga it's healed them in some sort of way and that's why i suppose like you Lindsay, we're passionate about sharing it because we can see how much it can help us in our everyday lives and it's still very relevant now as it was many thousands of years ago so on that point, I'd really like to come back and have a chat about this word curvy because it's um, very much accepted in America and, you know, it, people are really kind of getting on board with all um, everything that's going on there. I just wondered how you've been finding um, the use of it and people's interpretation of it from a UK kind of cultural perspective. Um, from a UK, it depends, um, Lindsay, because some people think, why do you have to put the word curvy in front of yoga it should just be yoga so everybody should be welcome but I find that it is needed because there are people searching for yoga that may me may not be that typical yoga body so to speak and that's one way of identifying it and curvy has a lot of connotations when I first started with curvy yoga it was for women that were slightly larger but then anybody that's curvy will come along so it can be someone that's curvy just in terms of shape but also someone that may be slightly larger so I'm finding that a lot more people are coming to the mat when they find out curvy yoga but I'm using more body positive yoga because I think that seems to appeal to a lot more um, individuals because that maybe gives the idea that it's going to be a safer space and that the yoga will be a bit more slow slower in that respect so I find that's working more but the curve some yoga will always be there but I hope that one day I can maybe get rid of the curve some yoga because anyone that will come to my class will know what I'm about so they'll know that that's a natural natural given there in that respect and there'll be no need for it but but now it definitely is needed as a, as a like a signpost to say look here I am in all the other forms of yoga and also I see nothing wrong with it because you've got 
dog yoga, you've got <laughs> press yoga. So there's a yoga for everybody out there. So I don't know why some people get offended. And sometimes it's just teachers, like why they get on this high horse? Why do you need this? It's another form of yoga, but it really is needed to attract people that don't see themselves onto the yoga mat. That's interesting because I've had a very sort of mixed response up in Scotland where I'm based as well. And it, it does range from that well, while ago to there because the yoga is for everybody. And then I also see this sort of group of people that um, some of them, it's um, more, it's really difficult to get into a yoga space in a yoga room. So it's about creating that acceptability. Mm-hmm. But I've also found that sort of the people that I know that are really going to benefit from it and some of the um, adjustments and modifications I can offer to make a practice accessible they're not even able to get into the root, the space in the first place. And those that do are then very relaxed and come back again. And in a way that's led me a bit more down this idea of the mental wellbeing health route. And um, um, as you know, I've signed up, I'm a signature of the Mental Health Charter in Scotland, which is all about just um, breaking down barriers for people with mental um, challenges to access activity like yoga. So um, I'm kind of trying some different messages or different ways to kind of link into this group and you know, help make it okay for them to come. But at the same time, I think, yeah, it's still like, it feels like a moving target for me up in Scotland. But what I found that works for me, um, Lindsay's imagery, because representation matters. And I find when individuals see themselves represented, they're more inclined to want to come along to see. And I think that's what I do more. And that I can put an image up and I can get it. The reach will be so vast. So maybe try the imagery. The words will help, but imagery, because people are very visual. And sometimes I know it it gets away from making yoga very visual. (laughs) You can't see, (laughs) you can't show all the different aspects, like the breathing, you know, but just women doing the yoga will appeal because it's like oh there's someone like me doing it and I'm trying to move away from using bodies from the states and the reason for that is because they think oh these women like Dane um, Dana Falsetti and Jessamine they're very confident so they're beginning to think that oh they're out there they can't do it so that's why using um, individuals from the UK or London I think has a bit more impact and that's starting to happen there and there is a bit of a a, a shift in terms of more people are coming on board but when you look at their social media feed they're not really body positive it's just the, the latest trend now or the latest hashtag that they can use to maybe appeal to more people um to get them into yoga unfortunately And here's the thing what I'm kind of doing, like people don't realize it, but I bring into like curvy related themes and suggestions into my classes and practice anyway. So, you know, trying to help make it more accessible, you know, to maybe suggest moving your leg in a certain way or really kind of feel how it is for you and making it more comfortable and perhaps using a few props. So it's kind of happening anyway. Um, But what I do to make it, what I do, because I did the training with Diane Bondi and, um, Amber Kearns and what they implement is called the bus stop level so you have three levels of posture so what you do you have like the the first one then you have another so a posture like I can't think of um what can imposter what you'd have three variations in there I can't think of one right now maybe like downward dog so downward we, we might not want to do downward dogs so you might want to just do cat cow yeah and then you might have someone do puppy dog because it's, it's too much and you might then the option other next option would the, the full um you know having the hands yeah. with the pot or maybe bringing in blocks so you give the options there and that seems to work but what you do empower them to use those posts they want to see i don't actually say well linda you do that one this week but i you know i might suggest it but you empower them they may try and then they come back off and make and let them know it's okay and just with props i just i have props myself and i use props um so they then don't feel as though they're being picked on by me suggesting it so it's a level playing field for everybody having the props at the start of the class there as well and that seems to work and and you know and i and i i use the props even when i um, do anything on social media i love my yoga wheel right now so i'll go on my wheel and it's a prop but it's it's making the posture sometimes even more difficult so you know there's <laughs> different levels or different degrees in which you can use the props or even like pull the wall as I call it you know it's support and it's it's fine it doesn't mean that you're less any less of a yogi by using the prop so it's moving away from that stigma that some individuals may have or feel if they use the props that they're not as good as maybe somebody else in the room as well 
I think that's that good good advice there. So why don't we move into a bit about like maybe some tips and techniques? And we've already said that perhaps we're not set up in the best way today to show uh, full on postures, but with some things maybe we can talk about or show from the angles that we've got. Do you want to start off with one first that comes to mind? Okay, so um, one posture maybe that individuals find is eagle, you know, eagle arms. So instead of if you this is not accessible, then what maybe I say someone will do is just elbow to elbow mm-hmm. and just push down and then maybe you haven't got a belt here I didn't bring my belt I was just having the belt in the hands and walking the hands together and that will eventually go um together but that might not be possible but just doing that and pulling down slightly will yeah. start to open up the shoulders and sometimes what I do is say you can kind of hug your shoulders as well yeah. and you can kind of bring that security comfort in you know yeah. type thing that's yeah. really nice. and that's another good one but I think when you hug though if that's that's available that's fine but if you do if you can pulling it down you open the shoulders a little bit more so you're working towards it because I find it's like as you said mentioned I teach Bikram so when I sometimes go in the room men have you know bulging biceps so they always find it difficult and some of them I then make them do that and eventually they do get the grip some may never get the grip because some postures may not be possible because of the body types but some you can tell who can go a bit further instead of just being here and doing that and you see them two years later yeah the journey so as a teacher we make that judgment call but I always say to anybody your body is the best guide Listen yeah, to I like that idea of the strap there and that way you're still working trapezius at back, getting that nice work yeah. muscle there. Yeah. And then eventually, and sometimes, you know, you do the first set, I sometimes mm-hmm. I do it twice, but the second time when the body it's opens, a bit of training. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then you do, you know, it's, it's starting to come and you just see this, they're stunned that they can actually even try to do it sometimes as well because it's not the body stiffling, it's the mind, as you well know. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Okay, so yeah, would you like to offer? Yes, I'm going to show you one of mine. I'm going to move back a little bit here. So funnily enough, I've left all my yoga straps at the studio. Uh, however, it did make me run around the house thinking about what you can do to modify, which is perfect because if you're at home, you might need to do this too. So I have one very lovely uh, man's tie here with um, Bugs Bunny on. That's <laughs> always an option. A dressing gown cord, or I've got my son's karate belt. Now, if you're a parent and your kids do this, you've probably got, like me, like a whole range of colours in every colour. Um, but what a perfect reuse. So uh, which one should I go for? I'm going to use the karate belt. So this is one for people who find themselves slightly larger chested or just find that when you're doing particular inversion, like a downward dog or even in a, like a box position, but often what can happen, the chest, no matter what type of bra you've got on, you might find it moves up and it has this effect of where it starts to come into the throat and it can restrict the breathing somewhat. And as we know, breathing is very important in yoga. And sometimes if you've got that feeling, and if, if, even if it's just a slight feeling of suffocation, you will not have your mind in the right place at that moment. You'll not be getting the benefits of posture. You'll just be like, I'm trying to breathe. And when can I come out of this, please? So this one is quite useful. And um, do you know what? Even if you're not sure whether you're, large chested or not it might be something you give a go and it works for you so it's uh, it looks a bit strange but I'm going to take a strap or anything and I'm going to put it around my back here and I want to sort of bring it just above where your chest is and then just fold it now the advantage of a yoga strap is that you can cinch it a bit more easily whereas this I'm going to end up with a bit of a knot so I might turn it to the side slightly I might decide to leave it like this or I might put in a second knot and then what you've done is cinch it in, not, not obviously too tight, you don't want it to be painful. You've got a bit of cinch effect there. And then as, as you go down into whatever posture, you'll just notice, a bit hard to demo here, but it just keeps this chest, it gives you that little bit of extra breathing space. And a lot of people I've worked with, I've just found suddenly that posture is a completely different experience for them because they can stay there a bit longer, they can work with their breath, they've not suddenly got this constriction in their body to work with. Yeah. And that's also good for um, shoulder stand as well. Yes, you're right. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, and that's one one I use. But I normally have the belt there, so that's very good. Yeah. So, no, very good um, tips there. But if you yeah. want any more, if you have any other questions that you may um, want on uh, modifications or variations, please feel free to message us after this video as well, or before the next one, hopefully. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, Lindsay, you are up to so many things at the moment. Can you tell us a little bit? about what you're doing and what the future holds and you've just actually written a book which I I read and absolutely love as well 
Yes, thank you. Do you know what? I did have it next to me just in case. So, um, yeah, uh, really exciting journey. And as we know, sometimes when you sort of yield to the universe and, and follow a certain path, it starts to open up new doors that you would never imagined. And I definitely feel like I'm loving that journey right now. Um, so, yeah, just had a book published that's uh, that's doing well so far. And um, I'm working with Sam H, the Scottish Association for Mental Health. They've just run out a new um, social media campaign, which I'm on and included in talking about yoga as one activity to support mental health and well-being so that's really exciting um, following Scottish Parliament that I went to last year I'm working with a few MSPs that's a member of Scottish Parliament um, about bringing to their constituents some events just to support mental health and well-being and encouraging uh, people in the community in to experience and hear about um, yoga and breathing and meditation and mindfulness um, so it feels like it's a good time right now that communities are a little bit more open to finding ways to just support themselves against the everyday stresses and strains um, of our lives. So yeah, lots going on and I'm sure there's a lot more things that will be happening, but in a nutshell, <laughs> that's me keeping me busy. Yeah. And where can anyone buy the book, Lindsay? You can get it on most online distributors, um, including things like Amazon in paperback or in Kindle versions. So um, the title is Whirlpool's Yoga and the Balance of Life. And I highly recommend it. I know Lindsay well, but I know her a lot better now after reading the book. It's really inspirational. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I keep saying I don't have so many secrets anymore. Um, yeah, there you go. Yeah, and it's really nice that so many people have been saying that when they're reading some of my story, they're finding significance and memories from their own stories that, you know, maybe have faded over the years, but are coming back from the things they've done. And that's really special to, to hear that and be able to facilitate that. So yoga. Um, so Donna, what, what else is happening with you at the um, moment? Well, much at the moment. So as you mentioned, I'm talking at the um, yoga in NHS conference at the weekend. So I'm looking forward to that sort of um, listening to inspirational yogis and speakers in the medical and the um, government as well. And also my um, workshop will be on body positivity. So spreading the benefits of that and just what a class entails and, you know, language and how to make yoga more accessible which is what I'm, I'm all about at the moment and what I did last year I did the accessible yoga training so now I can teach from anyone um, in a bed up to you know well all body types basically so I'm happy about that um, what am I doing next um also, in yoga magazine tell us about that you had a double spread didn't you in yoga I think yes in um in yoga magazine so that one was about talking about um body positive yoga because with it being january and you know at this at that this time of year still actually I still we're still in that storm of <laughs> diet culture and things like that so it was about just how to be body positive and how yoga can help you to just really come home to your body and how to love your body and a little bit of how how yoga helped me as i mentioned before with my bell's palsy how i um came to love my body because we don't realize Lindsay, how amazing our body is basically but we get in our own way by coming from an external point of view as opposed to realizing that whatever we're looking for searching for outside is already in us and that's where that happens I think it's happened to both of us and we start to sort of go with the flow and and trust the universe and you just think how has this happened so quickly now things happening more quickly and it's like I just thought that and it's it's happening and you think oh I'm getting a bit woo woo but it, <laughs> Work, so just on that point, uh, just for our listeners and viewers, so Donna and I ended up on this magical journey out to India last year, and uh, we got a chance to chat and talk and all things yoga. And something we were talking about that we'd love to do and make happen is uh, doing a joint retreat, body positivity retreat, possibly somewhere in England, so it's accessible from all over the UK. Um, but we'd love to invite people listening here, and if you're interested in that, then please do let us know so we can kind of get together and make it happen, eh, Donna? <laughs> yeah, look at me, everything. Love of a juice, so put it, we're putting it out there now <laughs> properly to look at it. And it'd be so, Lindsay and I, um, we, we very much complement each other. So at, on this retreat, it'll be a totally accessible yoga and there'll be talks on self-love, how you can come to, to, to navigate life and just how to get the mind-body connection, how to eliminate stress from your life. So it'd be, I think it'd be magical, actually. Probably a few giggles on the way as well, Nona. Yeah, because I think we, we both treat the um, take yoga as though it should be fun and not to be taken too seriously. And I think that's the way, if you do apply that, that's where you the, the yoga really takes hold of you. And you can just bring those tools into your everyday life. For me, yoga is when whatever you learn on your mat, you can bring it into your everyday life. And that's when you, you start to live the yoga. So... I because often will happen. 
I know. Yes. Do let us know. So what about resources, places where people can find out more, go for inspiration? What's on your list of uh, places um, to suggest? So, yeah. So if you want to find out anything about, um, God, what am I doing? So you can go to Curse on Yoga, um, follow me on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and I post very much anything that I find inspirational. You'll find them on there as well. Um, I'm starting my podcast again, so the links will be there for that. So I'm interviewing some inspirational pe- people, not only about yoga, but about body image things and just, you know, the things that I feel that need to be addressed. Because I, I went to D- um, Dana Falsetti's workshop at the weekend and um, it was about social justice. And just, Lindsay, it was about how we can use yoga to call out things that we see that aren't right, you know, that we don't have this, is it spiritual bypass and just say, oh, someone told you something's wrong. Oh, just do yoga and just dismiss what they're thinking. So again, yoga is such a powerful tool that helps us to make our community and the world a better place. So that's what I, you'll find on my feed a lot more. Um, and that's it really. And also on YouTube, there's um, free videos, um, free yoga videos as well. And I'll be doing some more programs later this year in terms of like maybe doing more coaching. So I do coaching as well, just how you can navigate life and bring in a um, yoga element in there as well. Brilliant. And some yeah. of the And your YouTube, all channel, channel. your YouTube channel, is that Curve Some Yoga or Under Yeah, it's Curve Some Yoga. So you'll, you'll see there's... Um, beginners yoga and body positive yoga there as well and i think that's it and if you go on my channels you'll see i think there's so much i'm going to turkey with a yoga retreat a self-love one so they're they're all on then i'll do like one day retreats or i'm going to be doing actually a wheel yoga workshops we we um, have yoga wheel and the yoga wheel just makes a lot more you know open your spine a lot more easily than trying to do these deep back bends yeah you can sit on the wheel find the wheel and just it let it, your, your body take the shape of the wheel, which is quite nice. Yeah. There is so much going on for you. What's keeping you grounded? What's your words of inspiration that you say to yourself at the moment? I just go with the flow. Just really go with the flow. And what I do, there's something like I, I adhere to, it's called the three principles. It's mind, thought and consciousness. And so based the mind to me is like the sky. And then, you know, you might have dark clouds that come and go, but the blue sky is still there. So to me, these will always go. And it's okay to have those thoughts, but they're only temporary and they will go. And that I can then see that some of the things I'm going through, it's just my interpretation of them. So they're not always as they are. So just to back off and let them go. And that way that keeps me grounded, that I don't get too stressed. And because, and the yoga is key, key, key for me. If I don't do yoga for a few days, Lindsay, my body will tell me I'm stiff. Um, I'm driving. I'm starting to get a bit, uh, you know, <laughs> the car hold, then I know get on the mat and just even 10 minutes of, you know, a couple of sun salutations really does grab me. And even meditation, I just sit stillness because I've got a very quick brain, just sitting there in the morning and just having that me time self-care to me Lindsay is um key on um, Sunday I'll have a hot Epsom salt bath everyone's like I've got no time but I just sit in there Lindsay 30 minutes candles just I even fall asleep just you know, <laughs> bringing the body back to, to base is what I do so self-care everyone I can't mandate enough I know in society everyone makes that self-care has been selfish it's not as someone says you can't pour from an empty cup or an empty glass so that's what you need to do so, what about you, Lindsay? How do you keep? Because you're you're equally as busy. <laughs> I think you know one of the phrases that keeps coming back to me, and I keep saying this to myself at the moment, is that notion sort of having the kind the kind thoughts, the kind words, and the kind deeds. And uh, I think I keep I keep reminding myself to apply that within, and uh, that's just making sure that I feel I'm focused in the right ways and the right direction. And that's both within the yoga stuff I'm doing, but just also to myself, but and my family. You know, having. Um, other commitments and children and things like that is keeping all of that in a place that feels right and comfortable for all of us. And how do you find that balance, Lindsay? Because obviously you mentioned you've got family, the yoga stuff and the book. You just do so much. So how do you find that balance for you? It, it shifts around. I'm one of these people that I can work until quite late and still manage to get up in the morning. So I have a fairly large capacity to fit a lot in on my day. Um, but like you, I love a bath. <laughs> that kind of uh, brings me back down. And uh, obviously the yoga practice is, uh, and the community that you know I, I, I share my yoga with is really important to me. I think they feed me as much as they see me feeding them to get them through their weeks in, in the best way, the right way. And it's very much a, a two-way thing. 
Yeah, no, I think you're right, because, you know, we exchange energy. And I, mm-hmm. and I can go into a class and I think, oh, I'm so tired. But the energy you receive is like they, they feed you. And it's, it's a two-way thing, and it's just so amazing. Because I saw some students this morning, because I, when I, I, I was taught Bikram in the States, and I did a... Um, I was mentored there and they taught me to teach with energy. <laughs> and I said, Donna, when someone's trying to kick out their, their leg and stuff, you don't just say kick and kick and kick. It's like, you really give that energy. And they were like, oh my God, I felt so amazing off the class because you push them and you let them see what they can do. So they go beyond their comfort zone mm. and then the endorphins really kick in and they got that. And that's what it's about. And that's why I'm so passionate about, well, especially Bikram because Bikram is one of the ones where, there's just so much energy and you can really channel that energy in the room. And that's why I love it so much. And I, I always go back to, but I do like the vinyasa, the slow, um, the slow yoga as well. And yin yoga, which I'm doing more of now as well, because I need it. Cause my, some part of my body is, is stiff, like my hips is mm-hmm. quite tight. So the yin and you sit then it's so hard, but again, mentally you have to sit with that as well. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's but, definitely lifelong. <laughs> and then, Lindsay, um, just going back, so you mentioned about what you did in the past, but what have you got planned in the future? Because um, any more books on the horizon? I know you've got a yoga retreat to <laughs> India. <laughs> yeah, India's come up. It's going to be pretty special going up to Dhammashala next time and uh, uh, Dalai Lama's uh, monastery and to see Jetsam no Tenzin Palmo, Buddhist nun, and uh, down to Jaipur. So that'll be exciting. I'm currently in the throes of hopefully bringing to Edinburgh um, a premiere of the Mantra movie, which is a wonderful movie you may have already seen or heard of it and it's really uh, it was six years in the making and it, it covers all the most beautiful mantra players we have around the world with us at the moment and it just takes us through that journey of how meditation mantra music can support well-being um, and there's a bit of science in it too about you know how it can change the brains and the alpha waves and how it works and um, so really interesting so that's keeping me quite busy at the moment to set that up um, the podcast series voices of yoga.com we relaunched that recently and just about interviewing yoga from around the world sharing uh, interesting conversations about different topics so and that's yeah. how we met wasn't it actually for you re- approaching me to your podcast and look here we are is it almost a year and a half later two Probably years is. and yeah. it's still there and you can still listen to it everybody <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay. wonderful right yeah. well shall we sign off from there it's been so lovely to chat to you Donna <laughs> as ever as, as always as always yes and uh, we'll hopefully hear from the listeners and you and I will catch up again soon I look forward to it. Take care. Namaste. Namaste.